Yo, what's up guys? Grey here and today we have got our week 9 battle of the BBR. We're going up against Ruppy and his Columbus Swoo in what really is a must win game for us this week. Uh, we are seeing a 3 and 5, I want to say it's either minus 9 or minus 10. Like, we are not doing well. <laughs> uh, this is arguably the, in fact it's not even arguably, this is the worst I've ever done in a Wi-Fi draft league. So, we're looking to turn this around. Um, we do need to win pretty much all our remaining games, I think, to have a chance of playoffs. Um, I say that, but like, it's really weird at the moment. Like, the cutoff for playoffs, I think, is sitting at 4-4, four and four, so we do still have a good chance. But, um, yeah, we, we realistically still want to try and win out to get a good seeding in playoffs if we actually can make it. We have a very tough schedule ahead of us. We face Seabad uh, in Week 10, and he is like 6-2, and two, I think, at this point. And then we got uh, Diet, uh, Dietite as well in our final week in week 12, who is, I want to say, 7-1. and one. So <clears throat> looking at the rest of the schedule, this is a must-win game because like, we've definitely got our work cut out for us for the last three weeks. But before we get into the team, make sure to go and show my opponent some love. His link will be down below in the description, along with all the other coaches for the BBR this season been a ton of fun despite the fact that I've lost so make sure to go and check them all out and uh, like and subscribe if you're enjoying the season and uh, hopefully we'll make a push for playoffs towards the end so with that out the way let's get into the team I haven't got his team up I've got discord up currently uh, his team is Tyranitar, Holucha, Rillaboom, Hatterene, Magnazone, Drodigon, Tentacruel, Klawitza, Rabu, and Marowak and uh, looking at this matchup, Tyranitar doesn't look too great. We don't, <clears throat> we don't really fear it too much. Like unless it's Adamant Choice banned, it will never break through Skarmory, um, unless it's like a Dragon Out set, which is kind of risky because we could run like Body Press Skarmory. We could be Iron Defense. We could be Whirlwind. Like there's so many things that kind of shut down Tyranitar offensively. We have got Keldeo and Weavile that really does a ton of work against it. Luxray can run Superpower and can just destroy it. So Tyranitar doesn't look like too much of a threat for, uh, from my perspective at least. Holucha is a completely different subject. That thing really just runs through my team. Um, I do have good priority against against it in Weavile, and uh, I guess like reasonably good defensive options. Like I I don't know, Skarmory is like my one kind of check to Holucha. I think on my team, I guess like. A defensive Luxray maybe can check it, but really I don't have great options against Holucha. I don't have a bulky Psychic, um, at least not on the physical side, and also it's you know, neutral to fighting. So um, yeah, I don't I don't think that I can realistically keep checking Holucha. I do have some text to try and like to try and make sure that Holucha can never set up. It can never really sweep me. Hopefully, that's the plan at least. <coughs> Sorry, I have not stopped coughing tonight, and uh, I mean, in the, in the current terms, it's probably not too great, but I know it's just my acid reflux. I don't know what's happened today, but it's it's just causing me many issues, so I'm going to have to keep drinking during this video, so I apologize for that. Uh, next up, he's got Rillaboom. <clears throat> now, I don't think Rillaboom has an amazing matchup against me, but at the same time, if I don't, if I don't check it well, then uh, if I don't like keep my checks to it around then it could be a big problem for my team i think it's almost definitely coming just because he wants the uh grassy terrain for halucha and also grassy glide against my team if i have skarmory and gudra and vileplume go down grassy glide just kind of runs through my team but then again that is three mons of my team that are very likely to come i think looking from his perspective so uh uh, it, it may not be able to do too much, but things like knockoff could be really annoying for my team. Just like Skarmory doesn't want to lose items, Gudra doesn't want to lose items, especially in this matchup. I think uh, Magnazone poses such a problem that neither of those two really want to lose items. Uh, Hatterene is a massive threat against my team. If he gets a Trick Room up, then there's nothing really stopping this Hatterene from being able to just run through my team. Uh, Magnazone, big threat. It's an electric type. You know what it's like for me and electric types on this team. No, it's 100% coming, it just depends on what kind of set he's going for. I could see Scarf, I could see uh, potential specs as well. But 
we'll see when we get into the game. Um, if it's Scarf, I do have a better chance of dealing with it, I think, because it, if it locks itself into Flash Cannon to hit Gudra, then go into Keldeo. If it locks itself into Thunderbolt, then I can go into Vile Plume. Like, I can go into Gudra. So I definitely have better ways of kind of checking it, but Pulse Switch is going to be annoying. Uh, Dradigon is alright, it's not bad against my team. If it's to come, it'll be like a Rocky Helmet rough skin set to try and deal with my Weavile and also to kind of pressure my Skarmory a little bit. It means that I can't really touch it outside of Toxic if I was to bring that. Tentacruel will be just a spinner because realistically his team doesn't have any other removal options. Like it literally doesn't have any other removal options outside of like Defog or Lucha. And if he's bringing Defog then I'm laughing. Like <laughs> if he's bringing Defog over a move that could actually just beat my team then that's fine with me. So definitely expecting the Tentacruel to turn up because Skarmory at least does put that pressure on. And it could also run Toxic Spike, so if I don't bring a Vile Plume, then Toxic Spikes could be an issue. Um, Clawwitzer, big problem for my team actually. Uh, does a ton of work in the grassy terrain, it gets Terrain Pulse, so uh, Keldeo is not a check to it. Gudra, as long as it's alive, should be able to check it relatively well, and I can always come in and revenge kill it with uh, my offensive threats later on. Um, even though I have to like sack to get some damage and then put it in range of something else, then that's fine. Glowitz are at least slow. Reboot, I think this thing's definitely coming. Like Reboot is really good against my team. Um, offensively, it hits the Keldeo, it hits Weavile, it hits Skarmory, it hits uh, Rabombi, it hits Ndidi, it hits Vileplume, and it can hit Karkol for super effective damage with moves like uh, Flare Blitz, U-Turn, high jump kick, uh, gunk shot, it, it just gets a, enough coverage that it really should be able to put some pressure on my team. Uh, Marowak, I don't think nothing's coming, like, Keldeo Weavile beats it, Skarmory just beats it, like, Vile Plume beats it. it, it's not great against my team, so not expecting the, the Marowak, I think the six we're probably looking at, it's going to be Holucha, Rillaboom, Hatterene, Magnazone, uh, Reboot, and either Clawitzer or Tentacruel. So, getting into our team. Uh, first up, we have got our Luxray, and yes, I've forgotten to nickname my Pokemon, and uh, that's like an automatic loss, but, you know, we're still going to play the game just to like, see how many we lose by, because we haven't nicknamed our Mons, it's just, I don't make the rules. Um, but we, <laughs> we've got Wild Charge, Facade, Player Off, and Superpower. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this pretty much just beats, we're an adamant nature. Um, this pretty much just beats his entire team, almost by itself. Like uh, Wild Charge hits things like Call Lucha. It hits the two Water types for super effective damage. Facade just does so much to his entire team. Um, outside of Magnazone, there's not much that really wants to switch into a Facade. I guess Tyranitar as well, but both of those mons should be outsped. And then Superpower is there to pick them off. Play Rough is just there for the Dragon because that is like really the one thing that can switch into my stab and superpower just fine. I say just fine, if it's not physically defensive, it's not switching in. But uh, Luxray just looks like a really nice wall breaker on this team. And uh, we might just lead off of it early and try and get like a ton of offensive momentum from the beginning, but uh, it depends on what team he runs. We could also use this as a late game kind of check. I say check as a very loose thing to Holucha, but there's no way Holucha can set up on this. So there's that at least. Uh, next up we've got Keldeo that is holding the Cobra Berry with Aqua Jet, Hydro Pump, Aura Sphere, and Air Slash. Don't know why I did, said that out of order, but we uh, have three moves of A this week, and I guess I didn't want to put them all together. Um, we're running Aqua Jet as just a way to be able to pick off a potential low health Horlucha. Um, certainly won't be expecting it, so that's always nice. If uh, he has like a, a Tyranitar set up, but low, then we can always uh, Aqua Jet that as well. So. It's really just kind of a fail safe against things that have been chipped away and uh, are in range of priority because I think priority is going to be crucial in this game. Hydro Pump does a ton of damage to his entire team barring his water types and Drodagon. Um, obviously to Rillaboom as well but even then he doesn't want to keep switching into a Hydro Pump. Aura Sphere is there for things like Magnazone for the Tyranitar. Um, I think Kobeo by itself is the reason why Tyranitar doesn't turn up. Um, it also hits the Reboot as long as it's still Fire type. But even then, like, there's no type it can switch to to actually resist a water type move. 
Um, Aura Sphere does tons of damage, and Air Slash is pretty much just there for the Horlucha and the Rillaboom. Um, Hydro Pump actually does more, I think, than Air Slash does to Horlucha, but at the same time, I would rather take like the 95% accurate move and a little bit less damage than uh, missing Hydro Pump potentially, because Air Slash into Akajet, depending on the amount of bulk that he's got on um, that Horlucha, it should be able to take it out. So. <clears throat> It's kind of like a fail safe. I believe this actually takes a uh, plus two acrobatics from Adamant Holucha, but it's like a roll still to kill. Um, I want to say like I put it to so the roll isn't amazing to kill me. It's like a twenty percent or something like that. Um, I think close combat or high jump like high jump kick will okay me, and close combat has like a sixty percent chance or a fifty percent chance to be able to take me out. So I'm thinking like there's a chance that he'll just go okay. Well, I don't want to risk the um, close combat, and then we've all come in and be able to ice shard. <clears throat> so uh, I think you go for the acrobatics, and we should be able to take that with the amount of defense investment I've got on this, plus the Cobra Berry. And uh, yeah, hopefully this is like a relatively good way of dealing with Lucha. If he tries to set up on it, then obviously we should be able to deal with it. Uh, next up, we've got Weavile with knockoff, ice shard, ice cool crash, and low kick. No triple axle this week because Drodagon is a thing. And unless I wanted to run protective pads, then um, there was no way I was going to run Triple Axel and potentially take like all my health to Dredagon, Ruskin plus Rocky Helmet. So running, excuse me, um, <laughs> running Weavile with Choice Band, Adamant Nature, because I don't believe the Horlucha will be uh, max speed by any means. I think it will probably run enough speed to outspeed Choice Scarf Weavile. And uh, like I think that I outspeed a set that is trying to creep that. I, I actually don't from memory remember but at the same time we're just running adamant because like holy just coming in it's probably just going to be to sweep i think it'll come into the grassy terrain it will already be getting some burden so there's no point in my opinion in trying to outspeed with weavile and maybe a bit careless because we can get the holy chair like the holy is not switching out that's the thing like the holy chair isn't switching out once it comes in so um yeah i i think my reasoning for it is solid uh, knockoff, he just doesn't have a switch in, straight up. Just no switch ins at all to a knockoff. <clears throat> like, the only thing that really wants to switch into it is a Tyranitar, and even that's going to take a good chunk. Probably doesn't want to lose his item as well. And, like, after that, we can just click Ice Cool Crash or Low Kick and effectively claim a kill. Um, the only two things that stop me from really clicking Ice Cool Crash on this team is uh, Magnazone and Tentacruel, slash, I guess, Clawitzer, but Clawitzer's not as bulky. Um, I think they're the only two things that really are stopping us from clicking Ice Cool Crash if they don't turn up or they are knocked out then Ice Cool Crash spam is probably just going to win us the game effectively. Um, low Kick is just there for Tyranitar and Magnazone. Next up we've got our Skarmory with Iron Head, Stealth Rock, De uh, Defog and Roost. Uh, Iron Head is there to hit the Hatterene. It does a reasonable amount of damage to Horlucha but this is something of our check to Horlucha as well because it means that it has to click Close Combat and a plus two, um, we do not get two KO'd by close combat, or we have a roll to live close combat, I think it might be. Like, to just not be two KO'd by plus two seems very unrealistic. But uh, I think it's a roll to knock out my Skarmory, but he has to click close combat twice. And once he's clicked close combat twice, it dies to an adamant Weavile Ice Shard. So um, that's kind of the game plan against Horlucha, as long as we have our Skarmory alive. Does put us in a bit of pressure because this is also my check to Rillaboom. And uh, he also has a Magnazone, so we are running the Shed Shell this week to be able to escape that. The only issue we have is that if Tentacruel or uh, Rillaboom click knockoff, then we're not in a great place because he can switch in Magnazone at any point and just kill us. So uh, we've got to be really careful with our item with this Skarmory. <clears throat> so um, if Hollucha doesn't turn up for whatever reason, then we just we can be more reckless with the Skarmory. We can pretty much just bring it in whenever. But uh, it's really here just to start up Stealth Rocks, because like that bit of chip damage is really nice for Hollucha. Just really nice against his entire team, realistically. Like If it's not a Heavy Duty Boots Reboot, if it's Eviolite, Light, then it's going to um, put Reboot into a range of other moves that I have. So uh, yeah, Skarmory is kind of not necessarily the best matchup for it, but it has a decent matchup at the same time. It's kind of a weird situation. Um, that as soon as it gets the item knocked off, it's in a, just an awful place because I have to keep predicting around Magnazone, and uh, I don't want to be predicting around Electric type when I don't have an immunity. 
Uh, next up we have got our Vile Plume, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking NASA Pestle Downs Vile Plume, and you'd be correct. This is actually a Choice Specs Modest Vile Plume. Uh, he has the Grassy Terrain, which means that actually a Specs Petal Downs will 2 hit KO his entire team. Literally everything, apart from a, like a specially defensive Drodagon, will be 2 hit KO'd by Petal Downs. Hatterene is O-Code, Tyranitar O-Code, Tentacruel potentially O-Code depending on its set, um, Clawitza, I don't, I'm pretty keen like 3 or 4 Clawitzas, same with Marowak, Reboot will die in Grassy Terrain unless it's Eviolite and got like HP investment, Magnazone doesn't want to take 2 particularly, it, it, just, it just runs through his team and it's a weird set, like sure it's not your standard kind of Vileplume set, but its matchup is just phenomenal here. To be able to click Petal Dance with uh, Modest Choice Specs, it's going to be good doing a good chunk. And if the Magnus Zone goes down, if he brings Tentacruel, once those are down, we can click Sludge Wave. And there is no thing on his team that wants to switch into that at all. Um, because we don't expect Marowak to turn up, and I don't think Tyranitar is turning up. So, yeah, Sludge Wave just goes in. <laughs> it, just, it just runs through his team after Magnus Zone goes down. And uh, yeah, Vile Plume looking like a really scary kind of ball breaker, which I never thought I would say in a draft league game, but here we are. And last up, we have got our Gudra. Oh yeah, before I forget, this Vile Plume also has enough defense investment to live a max attack reboot Flare Blitz from Jolly, not from Adamant. Um, it also takes, um, I think it's a good roll in our favor to take a hit from Horlucha. As long as it doesn't have a Source Dance up, we can take that Acrobatics. It's kind of nuts. We have a ton of defense investment to be able to take those hits, but hopefully it pays off. And last up, we've got our Gudra with the Assault Vest, as always. Drake Meteor, Sludge Wave, Fire Blast, and Focus Blast. Uh, we've got two very inaccurate moves, and I hope I don't regret that. But I just felt like I needed the extra power this week. Um, Focus Blast was really needed to break through a plus uh, through an AV Tyranitar. Um, other than that, we were going for superpower, which then meant my defenses were dropped, and I didn't really want that. So, <clears throat> I'd rather take the potential miss with Focus Blast, which I don't know if I'll regret that or not. And the same with Fire Blast. I think I wanted Fire Blast to be able to do more damage to the Magna Zone, to be able to kill uh, things like Rillaboom, to be able to do more damage to Hatterene on Switch. Um, Sludge Wave obviously does so much damage to Rillaboom and Hatterene, and then Draco just kind of blast through his entire team as long as Hatterene and Magnazone are down. So Gudra can put in work in this game, but realistically it's going to be just... It's going to be my switch into Magnazone, as it tends to be. <laughs> um, it's my electric type answer, as always. And uh, in this matchup, it should be able to check one relatively well. Uh, Magnazone is still really, really scary, but um, yeah, we should be able to take on that Magnazone just fine. Uh, and we have the coverage to be able to break through his entire team. So, yeah, that, that's the team we're bringing. Um, I've actually got quite a good feeling about this game. I think our prep is solid, and I think our matchup is not too bad as well. I think we've actually got a pretty good matchup this week. As long as we don't let our Skarmory go down early, I think Rillaboom isn't too much of a problem. Um, same with Vileplume. If we let Vileplume go down too early, then we struggle to break through his team outside of Luxray. But realistically, we've got like three wall breakers, and then we just got defensive pivots. Gudra, Skarmory, and I guess to a lesser extent, Keldeo is just kind of pivots. Keldeo has like the least necessary role I think it's ever had in a game. It's kind of just here, but it's mainly here for like the things that I don't think are going to turn up, like the Tyranitar and the Marowak, and like a potential reboot. It does hit Magnazone, obviously, for good damage, but. Um, if he brings like both waters, Rillaboom, Magnazone, Drydagon, then it, it just does nothing and it could be a sack. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm definitely going off on a tangent here. Um, yeah, hopefully we have a good game and Vileplume puts in a ton of work. I'm just, I'm, I don't really care how the game goes. <laughs> I, I, of course, I care how the game goes, but um, I'm not as worried. Like, I just love to see Vileplume do some work. Um, Specs Vileplume looks like it should have a fantastic matchup. As long as I play aggressively with it, it should be really good. But anyway, let's get into the game. I will see you guys there. Okay, so I'm really hoping that this time actually works. This is like the 10th time that Ruppy and I have tried to connect. And we have literally DC'd 
not connected, had programs fail, everything that could potentially go wrong has gone wrong. <laughs> so we can only hope that this time it actually works. Um, we're leading off with the same things. Um, I led off with Luxray, he led off with Reboot. Uh, good luck, have fun again. I've said this so many times now, good luck, have fun to Ruppy. Um, yeah, this has been a nightmare to try and get done. Hopefully get past turn one. The closest we've come to actually having the battle was the first try. And uh, yeah, we uh, DC'd on turn one. That's the best we've managed so far, so. Right, he leads off a reboot. We're gonna lead off with Luxray. And if this fails again, then you're absolutely 100% seeing the second half of this on Showdown. So uh, yeah, it's a little bit laggy. Being laggy is better than not working at all. I'm clicking Superpower because it covers every potential switch in, and I kind of expected the U-turn, and we get to see how much damage this does, as uh, I should have... That does a lot of damage. That does much damage. Raboot. Showdown usage. Um, I didn't see what health I was at. Um, I did quite a bit. I did quite a bit. Would really love to see... The Magna Zone come in here, but you know, if he decides he's gonna go like tentacle or something, uh, it goes Rillaboom. That's still gonna do a decent amount of damage. I appreciate the nickname, by the way. I'm currently trying to think of what drama that is. I want to say it's Rush. And um, we're gonna sue Power. This should do like a, a solid chunk. Yeah, that's good damage. We'll take it. Against uh, okay, so Rillaboom. Uh, how much was Superpower doing without that? Uh, 44 to 52. Uh, looks like it's got some investment. Did I not see Grassy Terrain? I did see Grassy Terrain. Okay. Um, so here I'm getting out to my Gudra. I feel like swapping into like anything is really obvious. Do I want to lose my AV? I think that's like the least useful thing. Uh... I could just set up Stealth Rock. Honestly, Skarmory doesn't have too much of a role to play in this game, so... Yeah, I'm quite happy. If he goes for a U-turn here, then... Uh, yeah, we can still switch out from our... Um, from our Skarmory, should we want to. If he goes for knockoff, then I get to... Uh, it's going for high horsepower. Okay. That's good information. I'm expecting the Magnazone to come in here. But... I'm also expecting it to be a U-turn into it, so... I'm just going to set up rocks. He may go knock off here. If he predicts the shed shell, then he's going to knock off. But um, I'm kind of expecting a potential U turn. He doesn't know whether I'm Rocky Helmet, so I guess that also works. As he goes out into the tentacle. Okay, that's interesting. I guess he just wants to spin away. And uh, potentially set up toxic spikes as well. So uh, I'm going to take this opportunity. Whilst we're in grassy terrain, I think to go into my Vile Plume. We should be able to take anything from this tentacle. Like we shouldn't have really any issues, I hope. Just check the calcs. Um, I didn't put any moves apparently on this tentacle. Uh, ice Beam. It does just lay the toxic spikes. Uh, it does have Magnazone in the back. So I think I just want to click Petal Dance. What does he have to come in and revenge this? How much is Reboot going to do to me? Probably going to do a good chunk, I would have thought. Uh, Flare Blitz is going to hurt. That much I can say. Um, I am choice specs, so there is that. Uh, how much does a specs do to defensive tentacle? Geek Drain's doing a good chunk. Um, I'm just going to click Battle Dance. Reboot may come in, but like, it looked fairly offensive to me. Just gonna lay a second layer of toxic spikes. That's kind of fine. To be honest, I have defog. So I'm just gonna hit with a specs petal dance, and that just drops. Awesome. Uh, Reboot does come in, but it, depending on its set, it actually may not be able to one-shot me. It may not be able to one-shot me. Getting rid of his hazard there is really nice for me. I guess in grassy terrain as well, so... Bell Dance actually has a good chance to knock out uh, his reboot if it's not 
Evie Light. If it is Evie Light, it's taking a Rocks damage, so again, has a good chance to just knock it out. So Specs Vileplume claims its first victim. Probably its only victim, but at the same time. Like, that is just ridiculous damage. I forgot about Grassy Train on my calc, so. Specs Tail, tail Dance going in. Like, with the Grassy Train, it just had such a good matchup. Like, there's no way he's expecting that. Like, there's no way. And we are fairly physically defensive. So we see that he is actually... Um, like, we have nothing else we can do. We've just got a quick Petal Dance. I'm expecting the Flare, flare Blitz to come out here. But depending on his set, he shouldn't actually knock us out. And we should knock him out in return. Completely depends on what his set is, of course. It's going to go for a Flare Blitz. Um, if this is, like, Adamant, no, it'll kill us. No, we live. And this should be another knockout. Because, yeah, it's going to be at such a low amount of health. Which is really nice for, you, for us. Yep, yeah, that's two KOs for Specs by Bloom. So this set is already putting in so much work. And we do get confusion on this turn, which does mean that we can switch out and switch back in. Which is really, really nice for us. So, yes. <laughs> I did expect Specs by Bloom to just kind of go in and get two kills off the bat, but, you know, we'll take it. We'll take it. All that defense investment I put into my Vileplume as well was massively coming clutch. As he goes out to the Magnezone, that's going to take a little bit of chip damage. And I'm not going to stay in. Do I want to go into Skarmory? Because I can go into Skarmory, go back out into Vileplume and just clear hazards. I could also just go Luxray. Uh, Luxray is really nice for the end game. He still has his water types left, so... Um, I think I still want to keep Luxray around. Um, but I'm not affected by Toxic Spikes, so that's kind of nice. Uh, I'm just going to go into Gudra, if we, even if we're toxic at this point. Like, it's one job is to check this thing. And as long as we can get a little bit of chip damage on this, then we're good. Like, we're going to have to take some Toxic Spikes, which kind of sucks. But we're always going to be in that position. Let's go for the sub. Interesting. So it's, what, sub leftovers? That should be fine. Like, it's annoying, but we should outspeed this by all means. And I can just fire off a flamethrower, or fire blast. Really wish I had flamethrower so I didn't potentially miss. And really the main thing that you want to try and get here is... Uh, let's get chip damage on this magma zone. So it actually is quite quick. Okay, it's body press. Interesting. That's not going to do much. So it's an iron defense set. Fire Blast going to connect. Uh, I mean, after the leftovers, if he tries to sub again, he's not going to be in a great spot. I could realistically just sack my Vile Plume to get rid of the T-Spikes at this point. And that gives me a free switch into my... Keldeo, which he doesn't really have too many great switch-ins to it. Um, I just want to see whether or not... Uh, do I go for a Fire Blast again? I feel like it's really predictable. I might go for a Focus Blast. Uh, I could also switch. Alright, Fire Plume still outspeeds the Clawitza. What's left? Uh, Clawitza, Hatterene, still outspeeding Rillaboom. I really don't want the Toxic Spikes in my server field. So I'm just going to go Vile Plume. And there's a chance that he switches, just because I, I can always break the sub. Yep. So Vile Plume gets back in against the Hatterene, which is actually ideal. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so nice for me. And, like, surely he's going to fully expect, like, fully expect the, uh, the Sludge Bomb here, but, like... I get to just click Frenzy Plant, uh, Petal Dance again, and someone's got to take that. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to click Petal Dance. Because if it's the, um, if it's the Magnezone, then that chip damage is just greatly appreciated. That's the whole reason why Vile Plume's here, really. It's just to do damage, and, uh, that's exactly what it's doing. It is hitting things real hard. It actually stays in. This is going to do a good chunk. Yeah, that, that almost drops to it. 
Let's go to the trick room. That's a little scary. Uh, I mean, I can still kind of check this. But we are going to lose our Vile Plume. If I had just gone for Sludge Bomb or Sludge Wave there, then this thing would be dead. That was a very kind of ballsy move to make. I just didn't want the Magnetone to come back in for free. This is going to be turn one of Trick Room. Uh, we can come back in and Ice Shard. Like Ice Shard, I would have thought we'd be able to pick it off from here, from our Weavile. And we are banded. So, uh, Katarine. Let's see, that set. Yeah, there's no reason why that shouldn't knock it out from here. At the very least, we can potentially like force a switch into the Magma Zone. Which again is just kind of fine for me, I'm not too worried about that. And uh, yeah, his switch into this are somewhat limited. I am just going to put the Ice Shard, I have no reason to mess around with a threat. But certainly Vile Plume put in the absolute finest of work. He's going to withdraw, good play. Goes out into the Magna Zone. She's going to take rocks, going to take banded adamant ice shard, which it's going to take just fine. It's bulky as shit, but um, that's still really good chip. And so once again, going to go out into my Gudra because I actually outspeed this thing in Trick Room, which is which is very very nice for me. Uh, it's unfortunate we're toxic, but at the same time, it's what it is. Now, if he wants to predict this and go back into Hatterene, that's a good play. But we do live. Uh, pretty much anything, I think, from that Hatterene with our Gudra. Now, there's nothing we can really gain from information-wise in terms of like damage taken and stuff like that. So, um, in Trick Room, we would have switched second. So, uh, probably going for a sub. Yep. Which means we do, unfortunately, have to hit Fire Blast if I had just gone Flamethrower. Would be in a better position, but... No, it is what it is. Now, as long as I like stop this thing from being behind sub then I'm just in a great place and once this goes down he actually does struggle somewhat to be able to break my Skarmory so that's kind of nice as well also really that Hatterene should not get another opportunity to be able to set up so we're going to see it probably going to be another body press coming out here and I think on this turn um, I probably expect the Clawitzer to come in I think I just fire off a Focus Blast. Because this thing is going to be outsped. By, well, undersped by my Gujo, but outsped in Trick Room. We are slowly losing it, but... Uh, okay, so... Unfortunately, we aren't going to be faster now. Uh, can I make a, a play? Do I want to make a play, or do I just want to let my Gujo go down here? Uh, Keldeo still has a place in this game. Uh, I think... Uh, oh, I'm just going to fire off a Focus Blast on the off chance that uh, he switches into the Clawitzer. He does switch out and goes, ah, okay. That's unfortunate, but like, honestly, Focus Blast should still take it out from here as long as we hit. Which we do. Oh my god, we've hit every move in this game, so that's kind of nuts. Um, that does take out the Hatterene, so... Uh, no more Trick Room, which is really, really nice for us. Unfortunately, we are going to lose our Gudra here, but... Uh, we oh no, we're going to live on one. Okay, I live on one, live on eight, close enough. Can't go into... Uh, can't get Rillaboom to Grassy Glide here, so... At least there is that. I think I just need to be careful with not bringing Skarmory in, basically. The biggest problem I've got now is that he's fairly free to click Grassy Glide. And, uh, yeah, if he knocks off, then that's a little bit of an issue for my team. Uh, do I want to preserve this as a sack? Do I want to preserve this? Um, I don't think I've got a good enough switch into this to realistically want to preserve this. Yeah, I, I, I don't really have a switch in. And I can switch out and literally just click... Triple Axle with Weavile. Do I live? Hang on, do I live a Rillaboom? 
it's banded. I do not live Grassy Glide. Um, I mean, it can't lock itself into Grassy Glide here if it is locked. So going off the assumption that it's not banded, it's just going to click U-turn. Which is still kind of fine. So that's going to take another round of rocks. Uh, Magnazone, if it comes in, it's got to take another round of rocks. Stephanie can still lose this game. Definitely can still lose it. Um, as long as I have Skarmory around, he really can't click Grassy Glide, which is quite nice. Uh, this is going to take another round of rocks. And his switch-ins to an Aura Sphere now don't exist. He does have the Grassy Terrain, plus other recovery. Um, he doesn't have a switch into Aura Sphere, so I'm just going to go Caldeo. And I'm going to click Aura Sphere. This should be able to knock it out from here, though we aren't like the most invested. Uh, Aura Sphere sh should do enough. It's going to do a good chunk to Rillaboom as well. Yeah, I'm just going to click Aura Sphere. Like, Rillaboom can come back out. But effectively at this point, every time Magnazone comes in, unfortunately does get a kill. Which kind of sucks. Because it's probably quicker than my... Uh, I say it's quicker than my uh, Luxray. But again, Luxray kind of just claims one as well when it comes in. But Rillaboom at this point is looking a little scary. I just want to get rid of this Magnazone, honestly. Uh, it's going to stay in. I would have thought this does enough. Unless it's like fully spadef. No, it does enough. Okay, so Skarmory should be able to clean up the game here. I would have thought Skarmory can clean up the game. Uh, we shouldn't live, by no means, should we live a Grassy Glide from Rillaboom, but we can fairly freely go into our Skarmory now. And like, Claw Wits are still a problem, still a threat. How much is my Ice Shard doing to Rillaboom? Ice Shard's doing 66 to 78. So I think I just need damage on this. Like getting damage on this would just be amazing. I'm going to scout if it's Choice Scarf or not. I don't know if it's Choice Scarf whether it could outspeed me or not. But realistically I don't want to make any other kind of read around this. So I'm just going to go for the Aura Sphere and see what damage that does. Pretty good Terrain Pulse. That was kind of to be expected. I may live this. We do not live this. <laughs> Can confirm, we do not live this. Um, Claw, it's uh, 50. I mean, there's no reason why it should be able to live a hit from Luxray. There is no reason at all. Weavile could also probably just kill it at this point. But I don't want to let my Wincom potentially go down for a misplay. I'm just going to check Rillaboom. Choice Band. Grassy Glide will take out my Luxray. Um, I mean, I'm Choice Banded, so I think I just go Luxray. I go Luxray and I probably just click Facade. Like, there's no reason Facade shouldn't knock out Gorwitzer, I would have thought. Yeah, Facade should absolutely just take it out from here. And it protects the uh, potential switch in to the uh, Rillaboom as well. So, I absolutely think this is my play. And if it lives, then uh, if it lives, then I can just go out into my Weavile and click Ice Shard. Probably twice. Uh, this should absolutely knock it out. I think Luxray is actually going to clean up the game. Uh, yeah, that just knocks it out. To crit, I don't think the crit mad, but I'm. Really sorry if it did. Like, if I'm calcing it, like, even if he's, like, max HP, even if he's max HP, he would absolutely not have lived that. So, uh, yeah, it looks like Luxray is just going to be able to see out the game. I have no reason to kind of over predict at all at this point. I'm just going to go for the Wild Charge. Just going to go for the Wild Charge, which absolutely 100% knocks it out. And uh, that should be game. Because unless this thing is actually Joy Scarf and just doesn't outspeed Caldeo, but if that's the case, then I can go into my Weavile and I can just click knock off and that's game. So, uh, GG to Ruppy. Uh, we, this is a much needed win. 
Um, we are going to go for the wild charge and we're going to knock out this for Witzer. So uh, yeah, good game to Ruppy. Really like, quick, fun game and I'm glad we actually managed to get it done. Once again, I, I apologise so much for Sunday night. I had just the worst sleep over the weekend and I fell asleep on this man. I, yeah, I, I'm so sorry for that and I'm so sorry for tonight being an absolute mess. But I'm glad we managed to get it done. We managed to get it done on Wi-Fi as well, which just makes it even better. And uh, yeah, we moved to four and five. Uh, with that, I think we move up to like plus uh, to minus six, which is not like completely horrible. Um, just another four, uh, three more wins, and you never know, we might actually make playoffs. But it's gonna have to be an end of the season, a hell of an end to the season, to be able to do that. But <laughs> yeah, once again, good game to my guy Ruppy. Make sure to go and follow him. Uh, his link will be down in the description below, as with all the other coaches in the BBR. But um, he's been an absolute champ with trying to set up these games and uh, like me effectively joining him because I fell asleep. And uh, yeah, without rambling on too much, I'll see you next week. And until the next one, have a great day, guys. Peace.